my child? <laughs> you think you're crazy? I'll show you crazy. Clint Culpepper, who's the head of the studio, called me and told me he had an idea he wanted to pitch me. So I went into Clint's office and sat down and Clint got up and gave this amazing pitch, this amazing demonstration and performance of this story that he wanted to do. He knew the scenes he wanted, he knew the characters, he was improvising dialogue, and I was sitting there the entire time thinking, you know, if the head of the studio is this passionate about this project, if he's really invested in it like this, then, you know, this is a movie that's going to get made. So I said, sign me up. It was up to me to kind of put it into order and figure out the scenes and the story within about two months we had a script and we started into pre-production really quickly afterwards. Continued to tweak the script, but it's pretty much the script that, uh, that I wrote. All I'm saying is that a lot of these single gals see the workplace as their hunting ground. And I think this one has got you in her crosshairs. It's something that, you know, you've heard before, but it's told in such a unique way. And it was something that gave us the opportunity to execute in such a way that it would make the audience feel like, wow, you know, I thought I knew what was going to happen, but he still surprised me. And I like films like that. Yeah, why not? Try that. Good. And now we close up on Ali. This script was offered to me by Screen Gems. It was still uh, being developed. Beyonce was already attached, so it was pretty hard to refuse. Sharon, you're so bad. Like, that's not why you married me. <laughs> particularly <laughs> interested me because it's a psychodrama. I love working with actors, but also it also implies genre, camera work, music, all the hallmarks of a, you know, a great uh, edge of the seat thriller. That's really what, what drew me to it. I specifically asked you, did anything happen at that party? And what did you tell me? You said no. I know. I don't know what to believe right now. I decided to see if I couldn't write a script that just basically recorded the behaviors of these people without explanation. I didn't really, in the script, delve back into their past. Hey, you know, we uh, both had a few drinks. So let's just forget about it. What if I can? David Lowry and I talked long and hard about what the effect was that we wanted from this picture. And I guess I have always felt that it works best in the gray tones where people's motivations are unclear. When all of the characters are flawed in one way or another, and I think that's what makes it interesting. There's been a lot of attention given to the, to the script, and um, you know we've had a lot of meetings and discussions. I think it's gotten stronger because it's been a real collaborative effort. As a director, I always try to think, what genre are we in? Because knowing what genre you're in tells you how to do it. You know, where to put the camera, what to say to the actors, what kind of music, how to cut it, that kind of thing. My particular interest really was to go deep, go deep with the actors, you know, with the, with the psychodrama of it all. So you come over the bed, and we do the thing. I'll grab the phone, you swing her around, you oh, right you get oh, the shot, oh, set the line, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's but, plenty. Yeah. I mean, we'll see how far we go. Steve Shill made me feel really comfortable and safe. I, I always feel like that's important to know that someone you can trust and, you know, someone that you respect is in charge. And he set the tone on the, on the set, and um, it was great. <laughs> it was really exciting to work with Beyonce. I knew that she was ambitious for it, and I knew that she wanted to do it. She brings all of the energy to this that she brings to her uh, stage performance as a, you know, as a musical performer. I mean, it's absolutely breathtaking. Beyonce really relished the opportunity to do something that nobody had seen her do before. She doesn't sing one line in this movie, and that was something that was really, really important to her. It's a dramatic role. She really has to reach deep, and the, her character, Sharon Charles, goes through such an emotional journey, ups and downs, and, and, and her arc is so interesting throughout the film, that I think that Beyonce herself read it and said, now this is something I can sink my teeth into. This is a role that people may not necessarily expect me to play. You are completely delusional. You're gonna have the cops deal with your crazy ass. Wait, it Don't doesn't touch me. This is definitely different for me, and what attracted me to this film was the empowerment 
Um, usually in, in a movie like this, the man in the end comes and saves the day. And Sharon does what we all do as women when we feel like we have to protect our family. What I loved was she's like, I have to handle this myself. And she gets that, that out of body strength that you know we have when we feel like we have to protect our people we love. And she saves the day. Derek, I'm gonna call you back. Sharon was probably in the early draft a little underwritten. You know, she was not as fully realized as the other two characters. And bringing Beyonce into it sort of upped the game with that character. And we did a lot of work uh, based on a lot of things that Beyonce had to say to make that character a lot fuller and richer. I worked really closely with Idris and Steve. Every scene, dissecting and understanding the meaning and the purpose of each scene. And um, this is actually the, the deepest I've ever gone to be prepared for a film. And because I'm playing someone that's not a singer, not a performer for the first time, it was really difficult to just be a young woman, a married woman, and, and you know, it's not about anything but the emotion and the psychology of the relationship. Red, blue, red, blue. The red one. They apparently have the perfect life. He has a really high paid job as an asset manager. Uh, he has a beautiful wife. Uh, they have a small child. They've just bought a lovely new home. And everything seems to be going OK. Sharon is a mother and, and a wife. And she used to be her husband's assistant, which is really interesting because when something strange happens with the temp Lisa, she has this intuition. And she's like, what's going on with her? They started out friends so they can talk about everything and they have the ultimate trust so when that trust is betrayed um, that's when it all starts and um, it's kind of the turn for Sharon in the film. Lisa the tip what happened to her? Yes, yeah, she tried to hurt herself. Why? What? Well, what, what did she do? M Mrs. Charles I'm, I'm sorry I, I need to get the story in your husband's own words. Apparently, so do I. Idris plays my husband. It's another reason why I wanted to be a part of this. He brings out the best in, in my acting. And it, it was so wonderful to, to act opposite of Idris. And he was really supportive. We just had a, a natural chemistry. And it's been a pleasure. And I've learned so much from Idris. And all I want to do. What? What? What, Derek? What? What do you want? I just want to talk to you. That's oh, all. Now you want to talk to me. Sharon, you know me? No. No, I don't know you. Working with Beyonce is definitely an experience. The engine of Beyonce is huge. You know, an amazing talent, huge talent. But then when she gets on the set, you know, she's very much a very, uh, she's an actress, point blank. She's very dedicated to the film, to the role, dedicated to the character. Idris, yes. you favor that side, B will be on that side, and you can be on this side on the way up. I was very excited to learn that I was going to work with Idris again. He and I have a history uh, on the, the Wire. This was very fun because now he plays a character who is squeaky clean. But there has to be an intense sense of propriety. Idris and I have actually done, this is our third film that we've done together. So, yeah, you know, he's a buddy. He's got kind of, you know, that, that strength that he just exudes in all his performances. And it's important because Derek Charles is a very strong character who gets caught up in some of the most impossible of situations. Derek wants to be the best. He does, does what most guys do. They play the field until late in the day and then marry the one that sort of takes their heart away. And you work in the finance game, there's a certain amount of risk involved in that. There's a certain amount of gambling. I think that, you know, that's, that world suits his personality. Are you following me? No, I'm, I'm taking these files to Mr. Charles' office. Derek Charles? I guess you probably know him. Yeah, I know who he is, and he's an asshole. Takes himself way too seriously, but don't tell him I said that, okay? I could get you in trouble? Oh, yeah, big trouble. He finds himself in a nightmare that he feels is not something that he created. It's come out of, it's come out of nowhere, but he's unable to really convince uh, his wife, Sharon, that he's completely innocent because maybe he's not completely innocent. He's complicit in this, at least to a small degree. Derek, he extends a sort of just a caring arm out for her to cry on one day and just is like, hey, 
And I think, you know, the sort of combination of her personality and that gesture just sparked off some sort of like a, wow. Maybe you haven't met the right guy yet. I'm beginning to think all the good ones are taken. Hey, I'm no expert, but you know, if it didn't work out, then maybe it wasn't meant to be. A personality like Derek, she feels like he's got it under control, so it's probably not gonna amount to much. Yeah, she's a little crazy, but I've got it under control and decides just not to tell his wife. So what were you gonna tell me? What? You said you had something to tell me. What is it? Yeah, oh, no. Just a problem of work, nothing I can handle. When I first read this, you know, I kind of thought that it would just be an, it would be an amazing ride. Lisa, played by Ali Lata, he begins to fantasize that she's having an affair with her boss which is not true, it's her fantasy. She's offered an inch and takes a mile, and it, it really ruins his life. It threatens his, his career, and more importantly, it threatens his marriage. All right, have it your way. <laughs> Nothing happened. All right, get out of my car. She's fallen in love on the deepest of levels, and there's no kind of rationalizing or understanding why they wouldn't be together. For her, it's only reasons of why they should. Ali has prepared for this role by thinking deeply about where this kind of behavior would come from. What kind of person would behave like this? She's knocked ball out of the park every single time. What I'm looking for is, uh, as I say, psychological depth and breadth. And she's given that in, uh, she's given that to us in spades. I think you know. you'll find I'm not your typical ten. She has a lot of insecurities in her life and she overcompensates for them in certain ways. Overall, I just think that she's someone who's had, you know, a, a nice amount of sadness in her life and is just looking for someone to love and to, you know, share life with. She plays a character that's difficult to like and a little difficult to understand, but she makes her character round. She really fleshes her character out and she plays Lisa so well that, you know, she makes her character sympathetic, even though she's a little disturbed and unhinged. Sorry, I'm such a mess. They won't let me take a shower or wash my hair. Apparently, I'm still on suicide watch. She's able to, I think, switch back and forth between these different facets of the character in a way that is really, really entertaining. She grabbed your package, flashed you in your car, I mean, come on, Dee. I thought we were best friends here. How could you not tell me that? Jerry O'Connell plays the best friend. He's the guy that's always telling Derek, oh, come on, let's go hit the strip club. You know, come on, one more drink. Uh, the wives, they can wait. Come on, you know, let's, let's have some fun. And so he always wants Derek to push the envelope. And so there's that fun interaction because Derek wants to, of course, take the conservative route. Ben is just like the fun guy in the office who's a uh, shoulder to cry on and also will uh, be the first to make fun of you. My character's married in this, Idris's character is married in this, and while we talk big games, we really don't walk big games at all. We're, we're, we're pretty much straight guys, you know? So uh, it's sort of fun when the stuff hits the fan because um, it's just fun to see how we both react. He brings some fantastic colors to this part. And the whole idea really is to show that Derek used to be like Ben before he was married. The chemistry between Jerry and uh, and uh, Idris has been very fun to watch. Do I look like a man who wants to get a divorce? Why don't I call her and say we got a work emergency? Come on. No thanks, I'll stay married. Coward. Yeah. This is a people story, and everyone spills their heart and guts out onto this world, which is very relatable. I knew that this would be something that everyone could relate to, but it would also be something really smart and told a different way from, from the typical horror film. On this film, I've really had a chance to shape and mold the material from an early stage, both with the writer and the studio, in terms of what kind of film we're making, what kind of audience we're targeting. I felt it is going to strengthen the psychodrama because it has to take place inside people's heads. So it drove the drama into the performances, and I think that was a, a great pleasure on this. Come on, come on. Ah! Crazy bitch! Ah!